Now maybe you're like, what the heck is baby led weaning? So he's tried 76 new foods so far at 10 and a half months old. Okay, so today we're gonna go in kind of the do's and the don'ts. But I'm also gonna show you me making my favorite recipe right now and both of us eating it at the same time. Hopefully you guys can't hear that in the background. I'm not sure if you can, but we are getting a new deck and so they are screwing in board by board right now. So, you know, gotta do what we gotta do. Zion is sleeping and so I gotta get her done. All right guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ronnie Mae Razor and for anyone who's new here, I like to share what works for us so that hopefully it can also work for you. I'm a mom of a 10 month old boy named Zion and we're just kind of going with the flow and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Now today we're talking about baby led weaning as you saw by the title. Now maybe you're like, what the heck is baby led weaning? I'm with you. So I did some research and basically what baby led weaning is, is it's a method of adding complementary foods to a baby's liquid diet of either breast milk or formula. So you're adding in foods that complement the breast milk and formula, not replace it. Now, baby led weaning is something that I found through some research. I was talking to my pediatrician at his six month appointment and I had been researching this since probably about four months on. Baby led weaning is a little bit more of a progressive style of eating and it's where babies feed themselves and it allows them to develop the oral and motor skills that they need while also developing that important pincer grasp. It also teaches them to kind of spit out or gag maybe what's not appropriate for them and they kind of learn food by doing it themselves. Really, it's preparing foods as I would eat them in a safe way for him to also be able to eat it. That's a really rough explanation, so feel free to actually look up the real definition of it, but that's kind of the general idea. So we decided with my pediatrician not to start Zion on solids until he was six months old, until he had full head control, and until he was showing you know, signs of readiness. He was showing interest in food. He didn't have the tongue thrust reflex anymore, which is basically where they try to push food out of their mouth, like meh. So for me, I went about the approach that, you know, we would do purees for a few days and then kind of add in the food as the food is meant to be. You know, it's really important, this self-feeding idea that we do it properly and that we do it safely. So there are some guidelines that I'll talk about that I did, but again, you should always, always, always do your own research and figure out the safest way for you to serve your baby food. Okay, so today we're gonna go in kind of the do's and the don'ts. I've also got some tips and tricks for a little bit later on, so make sure you guys stick around for that. I'm also gonna show you me making my favorite recipe right now and both of us eating it at the same time. So again, what I love about baby led weaning is that I can prepare foods that I enjoy and then also serve them to Zion at the same time, which just saves a lot of time for me and it makes meal prep super easy. We're about 10 and a half months in, so we're almost to that one year mark and they say at the one year mark, um, food starts to kind of take over what the breast milk and the formula are doing right now. So my goal is to breastfeed really as long as possible or as long as he's still interested in it, but to always incorporate new and exciting foods and new textures as well. So first do is research. Do your research. I know that sounds super simple, but for real. Like look up different feeding methods. Look up what works best for other people that you know. Go on YouTube, watch videos of baby led weaning. Watch videos of pureeing. There's pouches that you can make. You can buy pouches. You can you know buy glass jars of food. You can make your own baby food by pureeing it. And then you can also do baby led weaning. So there's tons of different kinds of methods to feed your infant. So for me, I looked to registered dietitians. I looked to infant feeding experts. I looked to speech language pathologists. I look to the people who actually research, you know, modern day techniques for feeding infants. And some people that I found on Instagram are Baby Led Wean Team, and I'll link it right here. And I also found Solid Starts. They're a great resource as well. And then Ms. Dawn SLP. And again, I will link her stuff right here. There's so many people out there. Those are three people that I would recommend looking at on Instagram. Now, baby led wean team, her name is Katie Ferraro. She's a registered dietitian. She actually has like a million kids herself. I think it's like six, but to me that's a million. I actually did her feeding framework. So for me, what the framework looks like is it helps you incorporate new foods, you know, on a loose schedule, but it just kind of gives you the guidance that you need to start this super intimidating thing called baby led weaning. So basically you introduce Monday through Friday, for example, it could be any of the seven days of the week, but it is a fruit, a vegetable, a starch, 
a protein and then a challenge food on each of the five days and then you know you don't do any new foods after that challenge food so that's kind of what the idea is the feeding framework will help zion try 100 foods before he turns one or i think at like 76 or something different foods so far so he's tried 76 new foods so far at 10 and a half months old and we're on track to hit that 100 foods before he turns one milestone which i'm super stoked on He's honestly an amazing eater. There is nothing that he doesn't like. The only thing that he didn't really love was avocado at first. He didn't love the texture or the taste, which if you know my dad, he was the avocado connoisseur, but don't worry, Zion enjoys avocados now. Now another do is to prepare the food safely. This is probably like the number one thing with baby led weaning that I hear is that people are scared of choking, which Hello, yes. I am terrified of Zion choking on anything. I'm terrified of anyone choking on anything with eating. I actually was sitting next to um, a friend of ours grandfather who ended up choking on his food and we had to do the Heimlich maneuver and call the paramedics. And so food can be scary for any age. I don't care what you say, anyone can choke on a piece of meat, anyone can choke on something. And so again, preparing food safely for your infant is the number one thing to control. So what that looks like is in the beginning doing the long strips. I'm gonna show the picture right here, but again, long strips um, and minimizing the food choking risk. So another thing to limit choking is to just always, always, always be sitting within arm's reach of your baby as they're starting out and as they're eating. I know that again, that sounds pretty simple, but just don't walk away, don't walk into the bathroom if you can always have an adult there to watch baby to make sure that baby is taking appropriate sizes that baby is not shoving too much in their mouth at once that baby has control now piggybacking on that learning cpr also a no-brainer it's so 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 important for you and anyone that could be watching your baby to learn cpr there's so many online courses out there especially right now if you're in the pandemic with me there's just a lot of resources out there and I would say for the peace of mind alone that you and all of baby's caregivers should know CPR. For me, I'm actually a certified EMT, so I do have a little bit more of an extensive knowledge than just CPR, but this is the number one thing that if baby does choke that you will not freeze, you'll know exactly what to do in that case scenario. Now, CPR is something that you hope to never use, but it's something that you'll absolutely need if you need it. You know, it's essential to learn it. So again, I'm empowering you right now. Go learn CPR. Now, another do is to research gear. You don't have to go out and buy a crap ton of stuff. I mean, your baby is probably just fine feeding out of your hand. But I will say that, you know, you want to develop good habits. And so for me, it looks like Zion feeding himself. Now, I want to set him up for success with this. And so we got him a silicone food bowl that does suction so that he can grab it himself and that he can actually use the side of the bowl to kind of scoop and put it in his mouth. Also, certain bibs. For us, we like the silicone bibs with a little catching mechanism there. It looks like a little, you know, pouch. He can just grab it out of there even. And it kind of catches all the mess that he makes underneath. For some people, they really like the apron bibs, which are, it's a bib, but it's also kind of a wraparound apron at the same time. I'll link that in the description. You can look into that one. And then also a high chair. Now, I want you to think about this. Your baby, if they're eating even one to maybe three times a day, they're probably gonna be in their high chair more often and more frequently than they are their stroller. It's crazy to me that so many people look up strollers and they research strollers, but they don't actually look up high chairs. And I was that person. I had no idea. A high chair is a high chair, but not all high chairs are created equally. So if you can just listen to me, what I've learned is that high chairs need to have adjustable footrests. So that means the footrest that can go up and down so that baby can place their feet down on that footrest. God forbid they choke. Hopefully they'll be able to push off of that to then expel that food that's stuck in there. So think about it. If you were sitting there and your feet were dangling on a chair, it would be a lot harder to kind of choke out the food than if you could actually firmly place your feet on the ground and help your diaphragm push that air up to then expel that food out. So again, looking for a high chair that has that adjustable footrest, that has a little bit of support around them, but you don't want it to be too constricting. 
And then you want the straps to be able to easily be removed off of them so that if they are choking, you can take them out quickly. So you don't want too restrictive of harnesses. Now, my child is Houdini and probably could escape from anything. So again, you do want some good straps, but nothing that's too crazy, at least in the beginning as they're learning how to eat. Now, another do with baby led weaning is get a little crazy. Don't be afraid to get a little wild. Give your baby spices, you know? Not spicy foods, but spices, right? So we can give baby that Italian herb seasoning. Babies can have curry. Babies can have garlic. Babies can have pepper in moderation, of course, right? You want to slowly introduce these flavors to them, but foods don't have to be super bland. So don't be afraid to experiment with baby and give them a little bit of spices. Zion loves lemon pepper, for example. I do the no sugar added lemon pepper, and I promise you, you'll be super impressed with their eating abilities. Okay, the last do that I have is do let your baby feed themselves. This is gonna be extremely hard, especially in the beginning, because they're not gonna know how to do it, you're not gonna know how to do it, and you're gonna to wanna to intervene a lot. So I'll say, even if it's a mess, which it will be, especially in the beginning, it does get better by the end, but especially in the beginning, treat it as sensory play. So treat food as something that your baby can explore as new textures, as new tastes, as kind of this exciting thing. And you know, if it gets to be too much for you, then save messy foods for bath time days. Sit on your hands if you need to. Really try not to intervene as much as you can because it's so, so, so good for them to learn, especially in those early days. Okay. Let's talk about some don'ts. So the first thing that I will say is don't start too early. Now, again, your pediatrician is gonna recommend a good time for you and for baby to start. So first of all, listen to your pediatrician. But a lot of modern research is saying that there are some key things that babies should know and should be able to do before they can start actually feeding themselves because they're not yet developed appropriately. So some things that I've researched and that again, hopefully you'll research on your own as well, is that babies need to be able to sit up on their own. So they need to be fully sitting unassisted before you can start feeding them. Another thing is that they need good head control. So if they're kind of you know, doing this swaying thing, how can they swallow effectively if they can't even hold themselves up? So they need good trunk support, they need good neck support, and they also need to be able to exhibit that they're not showing any signs of that tongue thrust reflex. So that bleh, where they just instantly, you put something in their mouth and then they just spit it right back out. They should be able to keep it in their mouth and then, you know, work their way down to swallow it. Okay, another super important don't would be to not give baby any choking hazards. So that means no hard candies, right? No sticky globs of nut butters, no honey, that's huge. No honey before their age one because of the risk of infant botulism and no dried sticky fruit either. Those are all super tough things for babies to, you know, get down and those can lead to choking hazards. We don't want that. I have to sneeze. <laughs> okay, another don't is don't freak out if baby gags. So baby's gag reflex is actually more towards the middle of their tongue, as opposed to where ours is the back of our throat. Theirs is a little bit more forward in their mouth, and so they are more prone to gagging. This is gonna be something that is absolutely terrifying to witness. It is really important that you learn the difference between gagging and choking. This is something that I had no idea about either. And so if you have never heard of this before, again, don't hold it against yourself. It's just something that you should be aware of. I'm gonna link an article from Solid Starts here about the difference of gagging and choking and what gagging will look like. Now, a general rule of thumb is that Gagging is usually red and it's loud and they're, you know, actively working it out. You can hear them coughing. You can kind of see them working through it. The difference between that and then choking is the noise and the color. Babies who are choking are blue and silent, right? Like there's no sounds coming out of them and they are turning blue. That's when you whip out that choking intervention and do whatever you can to get the food that's stuck in their throat expelled. Now, if babies are gagging, that's again when you've got to sit on those hands and let them work it out. Be ready to intervene, but don't intervene until absolutely necessary because you can actually lodge 
that piece of food further in. So if you're reaching in there blindly with your finger, you have a higher chance of actually pushing that food deeper into their mouth and their throat. And in EMT school, that's the first thing that we learn is to let the babies expel it out, but to work from an exterior point of view. So do what you can with the back thrust, do what you can if you need to with some chest compressions, but never blindly reach into their mouth. Again, if you take CPR, they're gonna teach you this and that is so, so, so important. So learning how to effectively remove a piece of food that's lodged in a baby's mouth is also something that we do want to learn. All right, so Zion just woke up from his nap. While he's eating his banana, we are gonna make some sweet potato lentil veggie burger patties. And they are so easy to make and delicious. And let's get right on into it. So you're gonna need some rolled oats, just quick cooking rolled oats, some green whole lentils, really any color lentils, I don't think it matters. You're gonna need half a sweet potato or a full one if you wanna double the recipe. And some onion powder, some garlic powder, and one egg. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add in our half a sweet potato. We're gonna add in our half a cup of cooked lentils. We're gonna crack an egg. And we need about a fourth of a cup of rolled oats. So next up, we're gonna add in just a couple, hello tugboat, just a couple dashes of garlic salt. A little bit goes a long way with that one. We're also gonna add in some onion powder as well. Again, you wanna make sure that these are onion powder and garlic powder, not garlic salt or onion salt, because babies can't have salt. We're gonna stir it all up. Okay, so the sweet potato lentil veggie patties are done and he loves them. So super easy to store in the fridge. They usually keep for up to about three days in the fridge or I think like a month in the freezer. And let me know if you try them out. All right, so our veggie burger patties have cooled and we like to top it off with some full fat yogurt. We got this kind. I like to spread just a thin layer on the top of it. Just kind of moisten it up a little bit. Yeah, someone is hungry in the background, as you can tell. So again, we're just gonna do a light layer and we will cut it up. I'm gonna do a little bite size for him. We're still getting used to water out of our easy peasy. So we are eating our lunches together today. Mmm. 
Yum. Now the downside to baby led weaning would be this exact part. Ew. It's all in your hair. Got sweet potatoes everywhere. Okay guys, so it's actually the next day, but we are gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully some of the things that worked for us in this video will also work for you. Go ahead and like and subscribe this video if it did help out, and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys.